Right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Michael Loven, who is in Cincinnati, Ohio. How are you doing, Michael? Doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And Michael is the Chief Marketing Officer at InfoTrust, and he's also an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati and Xavier University, a presenter, author, and he's been published by Forbes, Adweek, and CIO Magazine. But what we wanted to talk to about today is uh, the new book, and this is uh, written with your co-author, Alex, Crawl, Walk, Run, Advancing Analytics Maturity with the Google Marketing Platform. Um, so, Michael, let's just baseline it here. So you say, like, a, in 2019, there was $130 billion spent on digital advertising alone. Uh, but most people still have that age-old question about, okay, I do all of this advertise, all this digital advertising and that, but am I really getting the return? Is it really working for me? Absolutely. That uh, feels like a timeless uh, question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, John Wanamaker uh, famously said 50% of my advertising works, uh, if only I knew which 50%. <laughs> uh, and uh, over the past uh, couple of years, uh, uh, 10 years or so, everyone was talking about the promise of data analytics uh, and how it can help organizations drive uh, business results. But uh, doing this work uh, for, for a decade almost uh, and meeting with uh, hundreds of organizations, uh, we still realize that it is easier said than done. So we wrote this book to debunk some myth about uh, our digital analytics and help organizations take uh, proactive steps into how to think about uh, uh, customer consumer analytics and uh, uh, how to begin uh, putting it to good use. Yeah, because let's face it. So a lot of people get into it and maybe they, you know, start to do, you know, Google ads or whatever, and they set up Google analytics and they're all excited about it. But after a while, they're not sure what they're looking at. Because uh, as you said, I mean, you have access to all these data and analytics gives you tons of data and all of that. But it's only good if you can actually interpret it or if you can set it up properly to begin with. Absolutely right. So we look uh, at uh, data, if you will, in three different buckets. So first, uh, we talk about data collection. So mm -hmm. let's think about how information about our consumers is being collected across different uh, digital touch points, whether it's a website, whether it's a mobile application, whether it's uh, an Amazon store that we have set up where we sell our products. Then we talk about uh, our data governance. So how we store consumer information, how do we ensure that it is uh, compliant and follows uh, all the recent regulations such as GDPR, sure. e-privacy, uh, CCPA in the United States, and then we talk about uh, uh, data intelligence, right? because just having access uh, to data is not enough. You really need to determine how you're becoming more intelligent or how you actually end up making a smarter business decisions with this information. Yeah, so I think one of the struggles that people often have is knowing where to start, okay? Uh, and as we said, I mean, there's a lot of data available to you, but it's really an, it's really a case of trying to focus in on the data that's most critical um, to you. And I think that's a place where people often struggle because they're not sure what, what data should be critical to them. So how do you, how do you, I mean, part of what you're doing in your book is here is helping people understand where to start. Absolutely. Well, I think where you start is actually not with data. Right? At the end of the day, data is a tool to solve a, or help you mm -hmm. solve a certain business challenge. So when we begin working with organizations, so we aim to understand what is the business they're after. Right? And uh, the question might be, is your goal to grow revenue? The goal is to grow revenue. Is the goal to expand your customer base or is the goal to sell more to existing uh, consumers, so existing customers mm -hmm. that you have right now, right? How much money are you willing to spend uh, for every dollar sold on advertising, right? So we collect, we uh, get those business questions and then we uh, aim to prioritize them, right? Based on uh, how much money, how much revenue your organization can generate mm -hmm. if it properly answers or successful answers those business questions. And then we start looking at data 
to help us build our hypothesis. So if we identify, for example, that an organization uh, says, well, we need to increase the amount of revenue that we generate from our existing client base. So we need to be maybe selling more to them. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to start asking questions. So what is preventing your audience to buy from you more often? And we start looking maybe, how do you communicate with your audience on a regular basis? Is it in email? Well, let's dive in and look at the email metrics and see if maybe some of the emails are under delivering. Or maybe we need to start looking at how you do audience segmentation. Maybe the offers that you send are not segmented based on the needs, based on signals that we have about your audience. So what we do is we become laser focused on what business questions organizations wants to address. And then we look at the data that is available to us to start answering those questions. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a good point because sometimes I think uh, rather than do the groundwork of really understanding uh, the, the ideal prospect or customer, or as you say, what you're trying to do with your business, um, sometimes, I mean, people just look at it and say, oh, there's all these places I could advertise or all these you know, the way I could do things. So I'm just going to try all of them or try lots of different ones. And I'm going to do trial and error. I think a lot of money is wasted on trial and error across lots of different platforms when what you're talking about is doing a lot of the groundwork in advance will help you then to be more targeted on which platforms you end up going on. Absolutely. And uh, at the end of the day, you still you will always have to make uh, an attempt, try and uh, see if uh, you are right or wrong. The question is, how do you do it in a structured manner where mm -hmm. you minimize your downside, right? So whenever we look at the data, my question then becomes, well, based on the information that I have available to me, what forecast or what prediction I can make on what to expect? Right? And then based on that information, I ask myself, which one has the highest chance to succeed? And, that's, uh, and then I set up an experiment to determine was I right or not? And uh, again, in marketing, just like in any field, there is no such thing as being 100% right. The mm -hmm. question is, how do you minimize the number of mistakes that you make? How do you minimize the amount of campaigns that you run that are not uh, fruitful or do not generate revenue or do not generate profit for your business? And I'm a big believer into building and testing your hypothesis, collecting data and seeing what can you learn. When people often ask me, you know, what is a, a bad uh, marketing strategy versus a good marketing strategy? To me, a bad one is the one where you have no idea what you are trying to learn from it, right? I look mm -hmm. at everything as experiment and what can we learn that will make us better. This way, even if I'm not successful at growing my audience or generating revenue, as a result of it, at least I know why I was not successful so I can do better next time. Yeah, no, it's it, it's interesting because I, I think what you're talking about there, I mean, it, that, that sort of systematic and methodical approach of, of testing and, you know, focusing in on one thing at a time and, and managing variables and all of that, it's it's um, it's the right way to do it. It's time consuming to do it properly. And unfortunately, I think often people are looking for, for you know, quick answers. Um, and that's why they kind of dive into dive into things. Um, so what do you think is, um, one of the other things I think people struggle with is a lot of the, these platforms, they're constantly obviously um, evolving and they're changing and the way they operate and their algorithms are changing. It seems, it's very difficult often for people to just keep up with them, even when they get something right, is to keep up with it because it may change over time. Well, I think that's uh, the best part of the job, right? Is that the technology uh, is evolving. So we wrote this book, we published this book in October, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about uh, Google Marketing Platform, uh, which is a suite of uh, solutions uh, from Google, such as Google Analytics, such as Google Optimize, Google Tag Manager, and several others. And uh, I'm proud to say that in March, we already have the book, the same book, but edition two coming out because Google made a number of uh, changes. They announced uh, Google Analytics 4, which is a huge leap in the functionality of Google Analytics. And we felt, well, if the technology changes, yes, it's only one chapter within the book because this is a business book, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a book about how to use one tool, 
but nevertheless, we have to expand it and we have to make it uh, more evergreen, if you will. So we went through the process of updating the book and uh, the new edition will include the uh, G4. They'll also include Ed's Data Hub and several other solutions that are now available. So the way I look at it is if there are changes that are happening, good. It's an opportunity for us to leverage those. And ideally, we can leverage them faster and better than our competitors. Yeah, and I think that's uh, I think that's part of it is that I think in 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 digital marketing or if you're in marketing today is you have to realize the fact that this is uh, is an extremely dynamic um, area to be in. And as you said, I mean these especially in digital because of. Um, the speed at which technology is evolving and the, the the technologies out there, how fast they can they can program and develop new new features and ways of doing things is that you have to almost I mean you have to keep up with all of these changes. So it's not just the output, it's also understanding what's available and what's changing. You're absolutely correct. And uh, that also means that uh, we as uh, business professionals or marketing professionals uh, have to pay close attention to what is happening in the industry. And right now there is a huge change uh, that comes with uh, changes in browsers and uh, first party data collection, third party data collection. Uh, probably many of your listeners have seen uh, Facebook advertisements uh, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, are trying to combat the changes that Apple is rolling out that are going to greatly impact uh, Facebook ability to target uh, uh, customers uh, and uh, this more personalized advertisement. So we are in this uh, shift right now towards, uh, I would say, privacy-centric uh, advertising or privacy-centric uh, uh, analytics. And uh, we have to figure out how to capitalize on it. It's not a liability, it's the right thing to do. And our consumers will only appreciate us doing the right thing. Yeah. So, where do you see this? Where, where do you see these changes coming? Um, and what do you think the future looks like? Um, and I agree with you. I think it's one hundred percent correct. You know, the privacy should be should be paramount. Um, obviously, when you have greater emphasis on privacy, um, that impacts some of the traditional ways people have marketed. So, where do you see all of this going? I wish I knew. So I certainly have a you know, certain hypothesis, but mm -hmm. I don't think there is uh, truly anyone who can uh, say there's a high uh, guarantee that this is what marketing or digital marketing is going to look like within a couple of years. We have to keep in mind that there are new government regulations that are coming into play, which are somewhat unpredictable, right? We don't know exactly what they will I mean, there are browser changes uh, that are happening and the changes to the uh, marketplace, app marketplace, right? Whether it's iOS or Google Play Store. And there are shifts in terms of what consumers are expecting. So it's almost like a perfect storm of those changes that advertisers uh, now have to navigate. Uh, I do think that the pendulum, if you will, will swing and a lot of functionality that we as advertisers have been used to is likely going to go away or going to morph into something else. But the idea of personalized advertising, one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one advertising uh, will change. I, I'm not going to say that it will go away, but I think it will change. And uh, I think at some point, some of the restrictions uh, might be loosen up just because again we don't know exactly what the customer experience or consumer experience is going to look like ultimately to me the question always is how do we deliver the best consumer experience within the parameters of what is allowed yeah and and i think obviously this raises a great opportunity as you said for people to be more personalized in their advertising and i think that's kind of what people want is they they you know they i mean the days of being able to blast things or whatever are, are hopefully behind us and now it is more about being very focused and targeted in what you do and that obviously raises opportunities as you said for people who want to invest their time and energy in actually doing that properly and and really understanding um, their their buyers and their buyer behavior and targeting directly to those as opposed to being a little being more broad. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Um, would you agree with that? 
I, I think so, right? Uh, um, I, I think it, uh, a lot of this uh, remains uh, to be seen uh, by what is uh, happening uh, again in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm hesitant uh, to give uh, a, a concrete response. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries at all. Um, so, in in the meantime, as all of these changes e e evolve right now, um, what do you what do you see as some of the mistakes people are making? There's some of the simple mistakes people are making today that uh, that maybe they should look at. Well, I think one is uh, when the data is being collected, uh, we we still have this feeling. Well, my data set is not hundred percent accurate. My data set. Mm -hmm is not quite clean yet, so I cannot make business decisions. We have to leave that behind, right? We have to make a, a decision and say, whatever information that is available to me, I'm going to use it to the best of my abilities and I'm going to extrapolate the valuable content uh, out of that data set. Right? So that's, I would say, is the big uh, uh, mistake. We, the other one is, uh, analysis paralysis, right? Where mm -hmm. we have so much uh, information and data available to us and we don't really know what to make of it. I, the easy answer to that is form a hypothesis, start testing and see what you come up with. Yeah, And, and you and might and be right, might not be right. Uh, and the third one I would say specifically in, uh, in the field of analytics is a lot of times people are very good at reading charts uh, or building dashboards and reports but we do not construct the narrative. We have a hard time selling what we are looking at to upper management. Yeah, no, I would agree. The, the, the last one that you mentioned there, like I, I would agree. How many times have you seen people make presentations with lovely charts and graphs and lots of data? And then, as you said, senior management turn around and say, okay, great, but what does this actually mean? Like, how is this helping? Where is, how is this driving revenue? Where is it And the person? You know, may not actually be able to answer that question. The other thing you mentioned there, and I think it's it's a really good point as well, is 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 working with the data that you have available as opposed to always, you know, trying to perfect it or looking for more and more. Because sometimes it's tempting sometimes to go, oh well, it, it, things aren't working that well because the the, the data is not correct. I'm I'm sure we're doing far better than this or whatever. And we're great at fooling ourselves that maybe there's a problem with the data as opposed to as you said, like using the data we have and really trying to learn from that. It's a very uh, valid uh, point. Um, there there has to be, if you will, a happy medium where mm -hmm. the marketers, uh, if you will. Uh, get comfortable with making decisions. And uh, in, to a certain extent, that's also maybe the challenge with some organizations is that uh, uh, people are very concerned about making mistakes and uh, you cannot be always right when it comes to marketing analytics or really anything, right? Uh, so specifically here, I'd say the organizations uh, have to be more open towards the idea of uh, testing experimentation and a lot of times uh, you know failing before they do it right now the idea is again that you do not bet uh, uh, all of your chips on something yeah. right but you do it in a smart fashion but if you look at uh, you know, harvard business review uh, that publishes different case studies uh, of successes uh, and how organizations have transformed uh, keep in mind that for every case study that means that that organization that is featured in a case study, there are probably 50 or 100 of initiatives that took place, but did not really lead to a case study worthy result, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so what? The organization, it is, is still successful. So we have to keep in mind uh, that, you know, the other thing for, for your audience, John, look, look around. Uh, and if you look around, what objects do you see? Oh, you mean around me right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, what objects do you see? Uh, I have a few monitors, um, cameras and stuff, and phone, uh, printers, all of that kind of good stuff. What is one thing that is common about all of those objects? I'll help uh, you out. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing that is <laughs> likely common across those subjects is every one of those subjects went through numerous revisions before uh, yes it ended up being in a shape or form that you're using where the organization made the decision, it is ready, 
they can ship it and John can go to the website and buy it. Right? So none of these products immediately or from the moment they were conceived to the moment the first prototype was ready, were not, they were not shipped to you. Right? Yeah. And that's something that we have to keep in mind with our marketing strategy, analytic strategy. We have to go through numerous rounds of revisions and re more revisions means we get to we get more feedback and in terms of data feedback means we get more data and then we get more data it means that now we can use the data to form more opinions uh, hypothesis decisions yeah no i 100 agree and i think there's probably a so many companies out there have lost a lot of money just placing a big bet on, on Google ads and just pouring a bunch of money in there without doing the the um, the groundwork first. Well, listen, um, Michael, this has been fantastic. Uh, the book is called Crawl, Walk, Run, Advancing Analytics Maturity with Google Marketing Platform. Um, all of Michael's information is going to be below this uh, video, including a link to the book. But before we go, Michael, please do tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, this is uh, really what I do uh, I, yeah. in a sense that uh, my, my job is uh, uh, in many ways to meet uh, with uh, organizations, partners that we work with, uh, usually with uh, executive teams and uh, understand uh, what they're doing from the standpoint of digital marketing, digital analytics, and uh, help them put together and execute strategies uh, that uh, will allow to capitalize on data in the more powerful ways. So for me, this is the exciting part of my job is uh, ability to help many of these organizations uh, to transform. And uh, I ideally, uh, through these uh, changes, we can deliver better digital experience uh, for end consumers. Yeah, and I and I think uh, and I would encourage people to check out the book and check out Michael's um, the website of the company. Uh, the fact is that they released this book back in October and they're doing the second revision by March of this year it just tells you how fast this industry and this this area moves. So I would encourage you to go check it out. And uh, and if you need help to go and reach out for help, because it's definitely it's definitely an area where you can lose your shirt very quickly if you make some wrong if you if you place too many wrong bets and absolutely don't hesitate to reach out to me i'm pretty easy to find uh, either on our company website or on linkedin and mm -hmm. uh, if there are any questions uh, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, uh, maybe i can answer them or maybe point you in the right direction perfect all right thanks again michael my name is john golden from sales pop online sales magazine and pipeliner crm see you all again for an interview really soon thank you thank you john mm -hmm.